This is Josh White with JW Math Tutoring. Today's video is going to focus on one specific problem from the November 2024 Digital SAT Math section. So let's go ahead and take a look. But life is a dream the calculus could never predict. This is a problem uh, that appeared on the November 2024 uh, Digital SAT Math Test for a lot of people. Um, and I had gathered it as part of the other, you know, November 2024 uh, problem sets. But I didn't include it in one of those three because uh, I've actually found four different ways that you could uh, solve this problem. So I wanted to save this and basically just make it its own separate video. Uh, just I'm going to go through all four methods. So you can see the problem on the screen there. Basically, it it gives you four different expressions as multiple choice answers, um, and it says which of these has x plus 2b as a factor. Now, there's a lot of different variations. Um, I've seen some others that have like 3x squared instead of 2x squared, and also there are other ones that had like 14b instead of 18b, but they're all still solved uh, the same way. Okay, so the first method for this problem, which I think is the easiest, is to notice that if x plus 2b is going to be a factor, then for all of the expressions, the other factor has to be 2x plus 9. Basically because, notice, to make 2x squared, which they all have the same you know, a term here, you have to have 2x times x. And to make 18b, if you have 2b already, that has to be multiplied by 9. All right, so, now that you have this, basically what you're checking is the middle terms. And you're seeing, okay, the outer and inner, which for this factored form are going to be uh, 9x plus 4bx. And you're comparing those to the middle terms from all of the answer choices, and you're going to see which one gives b as a positive integer constant. So for example, Take the first one. Okay, we have 9x plus 4bx. If we set that equal to 9x, now we can ig technically ignore the x's at this part. We're only worried about the coefficients. So I'm just going to basically get rid of the x's because those don't matter. We're just worried about the numbers. Notice if you solve this, you get 4b equals 0, okay, or b equals 0. Now that's not a possible solution because it tells you b is positive and 0 is not positive. So that's how you could eliminate that. Now, let's say you check the second one, okay? So we have it now equal to 27. So now if you do that, notice you get 4b equal to 18. If you divide by 4, you're just going to get 18 over 4 or 9 halves. That's not an integer. It's 4.5. So that does not work as a solution. So now let's check third answer choice, 36, you're going to get 27, and 27 over 4, which is going to be 6 and 3 quarters, I believe, 6.75, that is not an integer. So by process of elimination, we can see that it's going to be D, but if you just wanted to confirm and work it out, you know, we'd start here with 45, we subtract with 36, and now notice 36 divided by 4 is 9. That is an integer, therefore D is the correct answer. Okay, so that is method 1. Now, second method would be to use Desmos and uh, to do the following. So first, let me get rid of all this, because we're pretending that, you know, I'm solving this from the beginning. So first, you would still... Uh, need to do this factoring. You would still need to determine it's going to factor as 2x plus 9, x plus 2b. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Desmos, and now you're going to enter in the uh, graph of the original factored expression. We're going to add a slider for b, and then I'm going to enter in all of the answer choices. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the slider and see which, uh, eventually I will get to a B value where one of the graphs overlaps. 
Now, this one, I'm actually going to delete it and just do it again so I get a different color. So that way I have four different colors for the answer choices. Okay. So now, again, I have graphed the, if you zoom out here, you can see a better picture. I've graphed the original problem and I have graphed all four answer choices. Okay, you can see that there are five distinct graphs. What we're looking for is when the red one, which is the original factored form here, overlaps one of these other four colors, green, purple, black, or blue. Also, I'm going to change my step value to one since I know it has to be an integer. That way I don't have to worry about moving between all the decimals. So, and you can see here, nothing overlaps, nothing overlaps, nothing still overlaps, nothing overlaps, nope. Finally, oh, the red one disappeared. You can see the other ones are still way up here. You have to go for this specific example to B equals 9 to see that the red, the original form, and blue, answer choice D, overlap entirely. Notice how I take that off, the red one's underneath it. So this is how you could solve it entirely in Desmos. For some of the other examples, meaning for different numbers, um, the B value isn't quite as large. I think for some of the other ones, like the B value works out to be 5, so you don't have to go like all the way up to 9. But this is how you could do it um, entirely in Desmos. All right, so now let's talk about... Um, a third method. There's actually two methods here. One of them uses kind of Desmos and one doesn't, but they're both similar. So let's pretend again, we're starting this problem from scratch. So notice if x plus 2b is a factor, that means, you know, x equals negative 2b is a, you know, is a root or a zero, which means when you plug this in, you expect to get uh, zero as your output. So if you go through and you plug in negative 2b, Okay, for all the x's. Notice um, <clears throat> you're going to get um, basically for the first thing negative two b squared. This whole thing is four b squared, and this whole thing and this becomes eight b squared. Uh, this eight, sorry, this eighteen b at the end. I'm just actually going to write that second because this term and this term are the same in each. It's only the middle terms that are different. So like these, I'm not going to bother you know, just writing them out. We just copy them down. All right, and then we have minus 18b for answer choice A. We have minus 54b for answer choice B. We have minus, uh, let's see here, 72b for answer choice C, and we have minus 90b. Again, what I did is I said, okay, if this is a factor, that means that x equals negative 2b is a zero. Therefore, when I plug this in, to the expression and evaluate it, I should expect to get zero. So now what we get, just when you simplify all these, is 8b squared, that part's the same, and then, you know, you're going to combine the b terms here. Well, in the first one, these cancel out. In the next one, you get minus 36b. In this one, that should not be minus 7, that should be, excuse me, 72b. Uh, so this one you get minus 54b, and then lastly you get minus 72b. Okay. Now, uh, what you can do is basically, what you're trying to figure out at this point is which of these, essentially their equations, has integer solution values because b has to be a positive integer constant. So you could technically do this by hand, but notice... Um, so for the first one, b is just going to be 0. So in other words, if you set this equal to 0 and solve it, you divide by 8, and then b squared is 0, and then you square root, and b is equal 0. Well, that doesn't work because b has to be positive. So for the next three, again, you could do them by hand, but I think it's easier just to go to Desmos. So all I'm going to do de is go to Desmos. I'm not going to use b, obviously. I'm going to use x, but it's like 8x squared minus 36x. Now, if you notice, okay, here are just do it. It's easier to uh, to just do it this way. So I get two answers here. I get zero and I get four point five. So those are my. These are the same values for b that I was getting in method one when I was solving the equation. So notice they're not integers. You know, when you and all of these are by the way, all these are going to have a zero. 
this is going to be 4.5. If we go to uh, just change this up, 54. Okay, now it jumps out here. It is 6.75, 6 and 3 quarters. Again, just like I got doing the first method. And then the last one, notice here it gives us b equals 9, which is what I got solving it out. So therefore, uh, answer choice D is the only one that when you plug in negative 2B basically gives you a solution of a B value when it's set equal to 0, which is an integer. Therefore, D is going to be the correct answer. All right, so now an, a slight variation of this is you could go to Desmos and what you're going to do is essentially kind of do the same thing that I was doing in method three, except that you're going to uh, use a slider and you're going to see which one equals zero. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to type the first answer choice, except I'm going to replace every X with negative 2B. Okay, so here's the first thing. I've plugged in negative 2B for both the X terms and now I add a slider for B. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the slider and I'm going to see is there an integer b value which gives me 0 as my output because that's what should happen when you plug negative 2b into the problem. And if I go from 1 to 10, notice there aren't any and it also keeps getting bigger. Like it's not, you know what I mean, it's not going to get smaller. And then you could change this to 27. And you can see, do we get zero? Nope, notice it jumps there from negative 16 to positive 20, and then it keeps getting larger. And then you could do the same thing for 36. Here, okay, looks like it's coming up. Oh, it jumps from negative 36, so it doesn't actually hit zero. And then it just keeps getting larger. And now if we go to 45, we start back here at one. Okay, starting to get to come up right here at b equals 9, which is not coincidentally the same value I found in the second method of solving this. Notice I get 0 as an output. That confirms that d is the correct answer. Okay, so again, this is just a factoring problem that appeared on the November 2024 Digital SAT Math section. I went through four different methods uh, to show how you could solve it. Personally, I think method 1 is the easiest. Um, but if you want to use method two, which is the Desmos method to overlap the graphs with the slider of B, that would also be, um, you know, it's also not uh, a lot of work or not particularly difficult. I think the last two methods um, are probably more difficult, um, you know, a little more challenging to understand, but they are, uh, you know, completely valid methods as well. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, sign up for notifications. Also, um, <clears throat> check out the other uh, three videos I made for November 2024 problems, you know, basically part one, part two, and part three, each with 10 problems. Um, and check out the other prior months as well. You know, everything got uh, problems going back uh, to May. So otherwise, I'll be back here soon with questions from the December 2024 Digital SAT math section.